Hello and welcome to the video today. I'll be talking you through how to construct a canvas stretcher which you can use to stretch canvas onto <laughs> and I'll be tackling part one with you which is putting stretcher bars together. Okay so how does this work? Well you can just buy these stretcher bars of um, whatever length you require in your art store. A huge advantage to this is they're generally better quality than the typical art store pre-made canvases. Unless you're buying your canvases from like some specialist supplier then chances are if you go this route of making your own from stretcher bars um, the, the quality will be better. But there's another significant advantage which is the amount of size combinations available. Today I'm making a canvas stretcher which will be 91 centimetres by 65 centimetres and this is, a, this is an advantage because typically in the shop they've just got a range of like pre-selected sizes which may not be the, the right size that you require. Another thing to mention with the so you buy the stretcher bars they typically come in pairs so I've got my pair of 91 centimeter ones and my pair of 65 centimeter ones. I've given these a check over just to see that there's no imperfections or any like really bad imperfections. It's wood, it's never going to be completely perfect. Because this, this particular canvas I'm making today is a little bit larger, it's not in the small category, therefore it's going to need a cross brace so you can just buy the the corresponding cross base cross brace pieces that's not a problem and they just slot together like so so they're they're pretty easy to install one thing you might notice if these have been taped together then they where you remove the tape can be a little bit sticky a good idea is to get a rag and some isopropanol alcohol ideally outside and follow the safety instructions and then you can clean away with the rag any of the residual stickiness from the tape and then you know that your your bars will be nice and, <laughs> and have no sticky feeling on them. Oh. And then you'll need some tools, so uh, it's a must really to have a white rubber mallet. I believe these are typically used by tilers when laying tiles. So in your, if you're buying this from a, DIY, a local DIY shop, it could be under the category of um, equipment for tiling with, or if possible you can just buy one in an art shop. And I've got a pretty swanky metal tri-square here these are really important for checking your angles with once you've put your frame together and you can make any adjustments. Also, I've got a little packet here which I'm going to open which has the corner wedges. I normally call them pegs but I think they're technically called wedges and there's two for each corner and they look like this. And I don't actually use these until the very last part of the process when the canvas is stretched, but these add additional tension. Okay, so I'll get going. I've got neighbors living below me, so to help preserve their sanity, <laughs> I use a cushion generally for when I'm tapping with my mallet. It just cuts down a bit on the noise. The stretcher bars have got special joints, these are cut with special joints, the joints will just slot together like this so you can see how that works so you just you just use some arm strength to put them together and the way I work is I put them more or less together let's just show you that so what I do want is my cross piece ready, 
So that has got the center cross piece has got these slots cut in. So that just crosses over like so. I'm just going to put that to one side and I can begin to loosely assemble my sidebars, my stretcher bars. So mostly we talk about a canvas, but technically speaking, the canvas is of course just the textile, which I'll be showing later. And the part that we're doing of the canvas is, is now the, the stretcher, the canvas stretcher. A bit of a wrestle sometimes getting these together. I don't really need the cushion right now. Oh yeah, the, you'll notice also that these are not the same, quite the same on both sides. There's a, there's a lip here. That's to keep the canvas proud of the actual bar itself. Yeah, it's like a rounded, maybe if I show you in that kind of, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's a rounded lip and it holds the canvas proud so that it doesn't, there's no unwanted edges showing through from the stretcher bar. Now, I can actually begin to put the cross members in. These really need to go in before it's fully assembled, of course, because you can't put them in at the end. I'm going to need to start doing a little bit of tapping already. So this is where I have my cushioning. And I tap fairly lightly because I don't want to damage the stretcher bars in any way. They're a little bit fragile, especially the, the joints and especially at this stage of the game where, where, it's, where it's all still a bit loose. Time for the underneath bit to go in, or the top <laughs> or the side, depending. It's all relative. Bit by bit is the key word, the key phrase, bit by bit. So I'm just working my way all the way around, as you can see. There's no rush in doing this. It's much better to have things be correct. Seeing as you're going through the trouble of doing this, <laughs> it's right, like looking through a window there. Of course, you can use the store-bought pre-made ones. They're fine, but when you do it this way, these are slightly larger and chunkier and more robust and a bit heavier, generally, generally just better quality. And you can be selective about the, the pieces you, you, the stretcher bars you're picking from the shelf in the shop, unless you're buying online, then you can't. <laughs> right, we're getting pretty close. I'm also checking that the, as I work around, I'm checking that these center bars are going into the middle of the slots, not too high or too low, as I want it to be all as symmetrical as possible for presentation purposes. That's why you see me occasionally tapping on these middle pieces as well, the crossbar pieces. So it's soon going to be time to start using the set square. You need a bit of time to, to do these. It's not, a, it's not a fast process. Okay, it's got to the point where these corners are getting quite close together now. They're not super tight, but they're close enough that I can begin measuring the angles. I have my tri-square and I can begin to check what's going on. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of fine adjustment that needs to be done, usually. Ah, that's pretty good. 
The key is to start with one angle that's correct and then to work your way round from there. That needs to come together a bit more. My gaps are still a bit too large, I think. Tap, tap, tap. Right, I've just closed up the gaps a bit more. And I'll show you that again. So the gaps are looking like about like that now. And I'm now going to start adjusting again. Right, that's not, that's way off. That's way off. <laughs> okay. You need the inward taps to get things back if you've gone too far in one direction. Might need to do that a bit on the wooden floor. Oh, that angle looks good. It's okay-ish. That angle is good, and that angle is good. Ah, that is not a good idea. Right, that's, that's good. I think that's going to be it. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of checking there. A quick explanation is required. It would be very nice if you simply could just knock the corners um, tightly together and that all would be well. But in fact, you'll find some corners will be completely flush together but others you'll need to have a slight gap in between, like here. Now, if you were to just bang all four corners together tight flush, again, here's a flush one, you would find that the finished stretcher wouldn't be completely rectangular. You wouldn't really have 90 degrees on each corner. I find it's often necessary to have a little bit of a gap here. In this particular case, I've got two which are completely flush, is it, I think? Yeah, two which are more or less flush, and then two opposite one corners are, have a little bit of gap in, in between. It's just necessary for getting the adjustment required. Because it is wood, it's a natural material, and not everything is totally perfectly manufactured, of course. It, wouldn't, it would not be possible to do so. Anyway, this, this is within my, um, within my tolerance level of uh, good right angle corners, plus minus a little bit. Therefore, this is now ready to stretch the canvas onto. Uh, which is the, the next phase. You can also see here the lip that runs around the front. So this lip runs around the front and on the back it is completely flat. There's no lip, it's not required. So that's ready to go. <laughs> See you in the next part.